All right, we'll get started in just a second. Just going to make sure that the sound is still working. Always got to click through the ad. Got to get the AdSense. All right, sound check. All right, we're good. Yeah. All right, hey everyone, Ryan from U Bike Escape, JT, special guest. Yeah, JT here today. And uh, today we're going to be unboxing a new brand to us. I mean, familiar brand, but new new e-bike from them. Their first electric bike that we've reviewed. This is the Flyer L885, and it's a fat tire e-bike. It's a, I think it's just called a cargo bike. They okay. do have a fat tire version of the bike, basically, uh, okay. but obviously it doesn't have a cargo thing. But that's the, I think it's the M880. Okay. So we're going to be unboxing this here. Again, we're, we're not professional mechanics, but yeah. uh, we do these videos because it's a great time for any of you to ask any questions in the comment section, either, either about this bike or any other electric bikes uh, that we've reviewed. And if you do decide to purchase any electric bike from Flyer, check out the link in the description. If you use that link before you make your purchase, it helps support eBike Escape. We Certainly appreciate the, your support. And eventually there'll also be links in the description to our electric bike accessories list, which has recently been revamped. Our top e-bike brands page and our electric bike discounts code page. And I feel like there's a few kind of Labor Day sales, uh, or at least we'll be keeping an eye out for some and adding anything that we hear. Uh, with that, I think we should uh, get started. Mm -hmm. I'd open the box. Yeah, uh, arrived in pretty good, good condition. It did. It did. Yeah, it arrived. No problem. It, it is a heavy box. It was like a hundred. I want to say the shipping that was like 108 pounds. So I, I did help the delivery gentleman uh, team lift it off so that we could save his back. Yeah. Um, but then that, yeah, it arrived. No problems. And I actually I did open it up and check just to make sure it was here. Um, it's double boxed, which is always nice to see. Sometimes you'll get you punctures to the side. Next thing you know, you're hitting a tire or chain ring. But this is double boxed. And at the weight, I'm very happy to see that because it may not have arrived yeah. in one piece. So. Well, most of them, I would say, are double box, and you can tell when they're not because the box <laughs> is takes, destroyed. takes a it takes yeah. a lot more of a beating. All right, so and uh, we should also mention if you're new to the channel, maybe you haven't seen JT, but he is the one who does most of the editing, if not all of the editing, uh, helps out with some of the me mm -hmm. mechanic duties, yeah. I would say, and. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, so yeah. the newsletter. No, I do do the newsletter, yeah, from the e-bike escape. I, I do some of the website stuff too. Yeah. So yeah, just kind of a, trying to, I don't know, learn how to do this internet tech thing pretty, <laughs> with e-bikes. It's been pretty fun. And you'll probably see more of them, uh, especially as we approach winter and start doing some more videos uh, inside. Yeah. I'm assuming you just cut down the sides, right? Yeah. So I don't necessarily recommend that you do this, but we're just going to cut the box open. And get a nice view of. I don't know if I cut all the way through this. Okay. Get it? No. Don't. Don't. Hyper <laughs> bleed. So there's the double box. Yeah. Into one. I just got your email saying my new e bike is en route to my home. Oh, in email. This will be my second e bike. KD scrapping. What electric bike did you? purchase yeah when well, what's your first one yeah always interested to hear what uh what somebody's buying as their first and second we'll cut this. yeah just make sure there's nothing to nothing important uh, jt has a special interest in uh unboxing this electric bike because uh <laughs> The kids start to go to school soon, so this will be the uh, kid hauler yeah. for the JT household. Yeah. Well, so and that's one of the cool things about this bike is that it is obviously so it's flyer, which is the it really it's radio flyer. So this is their e-bike side of the company. So if you've ever had one of the little red wagons, this is their e-bike um, company. So um, the nice thing about this bike, it's currently they're actually running a back to school sale, which is what this bike is. And so for twenty one hundred dollars, you get this and then the kid hauler. Um, setup that we have up there so it'll be uh i'm gonna put that to the test make sure it fits kids and give it a go save save a little bit of gas with uh, i mean i know prices come down but it'll still be nice to save a little bit of gas get some exercise yeah exactly yeah and exercise too absolutely now do you remember the the price of what the the kid hauler cost without it um i i want to say it was like i, I mean it was 
I think it's because it comes with the front basket and the like kid seat that goes on the, the basket that goes on the back, which is actually a pretty cool design. So we're excited to show you that one too. Um, I want to say it was like 250 bucks and the front basket was like a hundred. And I think it's supposed to be like $400 savings once you buy everything. Okay. Um, so it was a decent savings. I'll let you do that. Yeah. yeah. We'll start reading some comments. Oh, first electric. Nice. Yeah, Night go. Clover. I wish I could get one. I cannot afford it. I live check by check. Well, fortunately, there are some more affordable electric bikes, but certainly understand that uh, affordable is always uh, relative. Uh, but personally, I believe that, uh, for instance, compared to a car, if you use an e-bike as a replacement, they quickly pay for themselves over time if you are indeed using it. What size did they send you? Do you remember what size you asked for? I want to say I asked for the lar medium large, I believe. I, I, I do. I did forget to look at the sizing to make sure, but I did not I did not get the small one. So I believe this is the large one because I wasn't sure if Ryan was going to have to, to <laughs> ride it. So. My first was a Day Mac Max S Step 3. Never heard of that. And the new bike is a fabulous Road Warrior X uh, to 60, 60 volt dual motor. Wow. Nice. Uh, we have been in touch with Fabulous, and uh, it probably is a e-bike brand that we should uh, should review. Uh, we're just kind of a little bit, I wouldn't say backed up, but we have our work cut out for us over the next month or so. And I was just going to look at the, uh, really like the look of these. So they do offer small, medium, and large. So this is either the medium, or which fits five foot one to six foot two, or the large, which fits five foot Five foot eight to six foot six. Let's see if it's on the frame. It's actually what I was pulling off for. Let's see if I can remember. It's not on the down to one, unfortunately. Is there a, and of course there's no invoice. Yeah, I didn't see it, but I don't know. I mean, I can pull up the email and see. That. It probably would be good to know once you sit on it. Hey, Ryan's got a uh, spot for a defoplator. Oh, that's good. There you go. <laughs> You don't really notice it. Uh, I mean, maybe a little bit. It's nice to have, but I think it's once like once it's up on the stand yeah. and you've got and you have any sort of weight in the back, say a kid, and you just go to hop on if your tire's sideways, that's yeah. when a problem can come. So having to do flop later like that. But you're right, it's not a definitely not a big deal at all. I feel like the um the, so the price point at this this price, two thousand dollars, I feel like I mean as far as affordability goes, I know that's still uh, you know, I view kind of the affordable e-bikes up, we're up to maybe $2,000, but cargo e-bikes are just, they're just more expensive as it is. I mean, even a non-electric cargo bike is going to set you back, um, a little bit more. So I view the, this bike as the, uh, as the, uh, kind of still in the affordable category. And there's a lot of other cargo bikes at this price point. So I'll be kind of curious to compare. Ryan is kind of the ex, I feel like. Uh, well, I'm excited for you to, uh, you know, try them out a little bit and see how you feel taking the yeah. kids to school. And uh, Absolutely. I mean, a cargo e-bikes are by far my favorite kind of bike. We ride them the most. They're the most, I mean, even if you don't have kids, like we had a cargo e-bike before we even had kids for grocery shopping or hauling anything. There's just nothing you can't really haul. And there's, I forget what it is on Twitter, but there's like a, there's like a hashtag where people share pictures of like them hauling like furniture and like it's, and it's just like yeah. these crazy photos of like people like moving couches and stuff with like cargo e-bikes. It's a bit, and a bit it's much, cool. yeah. <laughs> but it can be done. And it, if you live in a big city, maybe you don't have a car. True. True, actually. Uh, free shipping in Canada and the USA. I'm not sure if you're referring to this bike or the one you bought the, the fabulous. And I believe it is fabulous based in Canada. I'm not, I'm not sure on that. I think they are. Some, yeah, I remember somebody recommending them. Yeah. I do have a video of the day Mac bikes. Cool. I think the the problem the not problem with Fabulous, but when you when you look at their website, it's almost overwhelming because it's like what what bike do you review? There's so many and they have all sorts of variations. I mean you bought it, she bought a 60 volt one. With dual motors. I yeah, with dual so. motors. Yeah. So it's it's pretty crazy. Uh show off the uh, the running boards here. I'm not sure if these are like a laminate board, but they definitely look really nice. Yeah, it's the I will say like the color patterns. It's like a dark wood where instead of it just being a um, like a lighter wood, they definitely stain it. And then of course we, being that it's radio flyer, we definitely went with the red to show off the uh, the flyer think, name. Yeah. 
I think it looks really sharp. I do too. And then and it kind of transitions to gray. So yeah. it has a, a kind of an ambiance of bold color. So, I mean, there's quite a few color options. I mean, I know white, black. I want to say there's even a blue in there. I was really, really, they have some pretty cool options. So. All right. Let's see, I can start opening these packages here. Yes, yeah, it's in there. Again, if you have any other questions, feel free to chat with us in the comment section below. And again, this is the Radio Flyer L88885. And if you planning to purchase any of the Radio Flyer electric bikes, consider using our link. All right, we have a standard integrated front light. There's a plug on the back there. Uh, we have the defloppulator, some Allen keys, a, I think it's a 13 and a 15, and a screwdriver. We have the simple metal Welgo pedals that come on so many electric bikes. Cut those open here. And let's see here. Perfect timing. Our cargo flyer arrives tomorrow. Our kids, Owen and Caleb, can't wait. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. How old are your uh, children? Kind of curious. Uh, yeah. That's super fun. I'll be trucking around a, a, a three and a four year old, so it'll be pretty uh, pretty fun to be able to get them on here. So I've got some uh, reflectors, and we have a. Let's see, it looks like. Oh, they they're sharing all the obviously the the heritage of Radio Flyer. Um, did you know that they have an electric uh, kids Tesla? I did not. That Apparently. Is... And then obviously all sorts of baby strollers and stuff. Yeah. Which doesn't the, the really standard me. wagon that you see everybody has. The Tesla Model S for kids. We should ask them for that. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that's that's really that's cool. Funny, actually. Um, they offer an extended warranty and exclusive offer when you register your product. So probably worth it doing for the extended warranty, especially on an e-bike. I don't know what the standard warranty is. Uh, they also sell scooters. Uh, and then let's see, JT was telling, uh, speaking about the Flyer M880, that's that center, looks like the fat tire, and then obviously the L885. Now, they do share the Thule, yep, maxi seat, so they must have the windows on this bike. Um, yep, there are two windows on there. You might have to get one of those, depending on how oh, the kids, yeah. you might have to lock them in. I was say, I'm going to get ratchet straps around the waist, <laughs> strap them in. So that's one of the cool things that I haven't seen on any other bike. Um, I don't know if you guys got if you got the back to school special for this. So uh, five and four for the kids. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, just awesome. a year year up. But the um, the kids basket it goes on the rear. It, it like zips down and has the yeah. railings. And then the cool thing is you can just zip up the sides, and then it becomes a basket for hauling cargo. Yeah, and I believe that like you. I mean, we can put it on, but yeah. it like protects the to the feet. So. Yeah, it does. But they also have a guard here, which is it has, well, it has the guard and the running boards, and I think all of that is standard. Like, um, yeah, it just goes on like that, and then the basket is the extra so very cool all right and we do have a owner's manual highly recommend i mean there's assembly instructions and probably some things about the battery so it's maybe a boring read but very important uh if you're new to e-bikes in my opinion pull out your top peak little allen said here we can maybe talk about some of the upcoming uh videos we have so we have the Magicycle Cruiser Pro video that'll yep. be up. Uh, well, all these videos may be up by Sunday. We'll just have to see or around then. Um, Cruiser Pro video, fat tire e bike at around $2,000. We have a Hemiway Zebra range test that we're going to get out. Oh, yeah, that should be soon. And too. then I believe, even though we just unboxed it, we're going to get out the uh, electric bike company model F their folding electric bike video uh, soon as well. I did some filming on that today uh, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, I don't know, it's just fun to review some of the folding e-bikes and uh, <laughs> well, we had... the, I mean the, the model F I, I looked at it in the garage while I'm here. It's pretty cool. I mean, it definitely has some, uh, some design features that you don't see on other folding e-bikes. Yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty awesome. The tire, I mean, the wheels in general, they, they're, like, they're not your standard. What size are they? I know uh, let's 20. see, 20, gosh, I think they're 24. 24, though. I think they're 24 by 3 inch. I did say it. I'm just trying to remember. Yeah, yeah, they're, I think there's, that's right. All right, we got the uh, charger here. I'm guessing it's a 2 amp charger. Yep, output is 2 amps. It's just branded, which is always nice, especially when you have as many chargers as we do. <laughs> It is a lot easier instead of just saying uh, D-Power. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. 
How heavy are cargo e-bikes? Great question. I would say maybe on the low end from like 70 pounds, I think the like rad wagons, like 76 or something. Yeah. Um, I can look to see if they have the weight of this, but I would say between like maybe like 75 and 85 pounds, maybe even 90 pounds. Like we unbox the Blix and that has two batteries. So that's maybe pushing that's even so higher, know. but they're heavy, but, um, and they do take, you know, some getting used to, especially if you're putting kids and cargo on the back, obviously make sure you're following the recommendations for weight capacity. Um, yeah. yeah f oh, fabulous is in Quebec. Uh, okay, cool. ZNH electric bike, been great and affordable and not familiar with it. I'm looking into investing for my second e-bike next year. This time I'll get an easy pass though. Another brand we haven't reviewed. I'm watching your videos. Any suggestions live? I think uh, it's really going to depend on what style of e-bike. I mean, I have, I have happy to make any recommendations, um, price range and like folding e-bike, fat tire e-bike. Um, use. Yeah. Yeah, use case is going to be a big one too. Yeah, for sure. Electric are great e-bikes. Yeah, we've reviewed now all of their bikes and uh, been very happy. We'll have our electric XP light accessories video out uh, somewhat soon. We still have to film it uh, while they're heavy. Yeah, I mean... All electric bikes just generally, yes, there are some lighter weight bikes like the Event in Solterra, the um, Ride One Up Roadster. Everything Propella. Yeah, everything yeah. Propella. That's that's another good one. But you have to remember there's trade-offs, way smaller batteries and also smaller motors. Mm -hmm. And some of these batteries can weigh 8, 10 pounds, somewhere around there. And, and same with the motors, maybe a little bit less, closer to, to 8 on average. Uh, do you need me to hold that? Um, no, I'm actually good. I got just about on. Good. See, I'm just, uh, and actually, well, we can, I'll wait till you're done, but we can maybe put it on its kickstand yeah. before we put the tire on. It's the, uh, the kick that different style kickstand there. Yeah. Okay, too. Kind of dual sided, which is common, but yeah, a little bit different. Uh, more moped ish where it sits up on the, uh, the center stand there. All right, there we go. That's pretty much good there. Cap adjustable in. stem up there. Yep, it has so an adjustable stem. I mean, you can, the nice standard or uh, uh, upgraded plate on the front here to cover the bowl holes. So yeah, yeah. Uh, another downfall besides the weight is the length. They are a little bit longer. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, where did the wire cutters go? Oh, yeah, put them up. I just got that. I there was two on the front here. Can get JT uh, <laughs> taking off. It looks like there is oh there is a center. It's a quick release up front. It looks it like is. it is quick. I think it's a, is that a three axle? All right. No. Uh, thanks, Candy, for joining us. And uh, yep. Normally on these uh, cargo electric bikes, unfortunately, they don't don't have front suspension. I think for the most part, it's just. Um, you know, they're not necessarily made for off-road. Of course, we would appreciate front yeah. suspension here in I, Wisconsin. I messed it up. Um, I put it in backwards. Oh, yes, I see. I did. This is uh, my first assembly on camera, so uh, I made a little faux pas up here. Wait, is it, though? Uh, no, that's, that's is on it the right? left did side. It, it does look It does well, because look because the, the dropout is in the back. But then maybe the brake is on the right. Oh, no, because the defoppulator is on the back. There you go. So the brake is on the back. There yeah, go. no, it has to be right. Yep. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, I just got to put the axle in real quick. Take out the spacer. Got some decent uh, cable management up here in the front. Shimano Sys Index shifter. Sys Index. Right hand twist grip throttle. Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes with the bell. The integrated bell, too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much easier is this with two people? Right? Uh, so much easier. <laughs> All right, you can go ahead and set her down. There we go. All right, what size tires we got? Um, they are so it's actually so it's staggered. It's a different setup front to oh. back. Um, is this a reverse mullet? <laughs> is that what you call? <laughs> I think it's called a mullet. I believe. Yeah. Oh, it is a mullet. Yeah, it okay. is a mullet. Um, I so thought the bigger wheel would be in. The, isn't the bigger wheel in the back part. on a mullet? Uh, no, bigger wheels in the front. So 29, 27. Okay. It's, he's uh, referencing mountain biking. Yes. Uh, it's a 26 in the front, and I believe it's a 20 in the rear. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah. 
very interesting decision. We'll have to see uh, if JT can notice anything yes. uh, different about that. I don't know why they would do that. Yeah, it's an interesting. I mean, it choice. keeps it keeps the rear super or like a lot lower, so it's helping with the uh, the center of balance at least in the rear okay. and front. Maybe you're not quite as worried about that, but yeah, it, it looks. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. So don't buy the same. Uh, uh, yeah. Two replacement yeah. tubes. Yeah. Or... If you're gonna shop for Tannis, uh, don't yeah. <laughs> don't get the wrong ones. Yeah. Do you have a wrench? Um, there is one that came with it. I do have a pedal wrench in the the kitchen. That's where everyone stores pedal wrenches, right? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You got the right one. Though. Yeah. Oh, and uh, JT is also sometimes uh, answering your comments. So yeah, I try and tag it when I do, so you know it's not Ryan, uh, so you can question it. But um, yeah. Uh, I am from Wisconsin, Green Bay. Awesome. Very cool. We're uh, just west of you, Central yeah. Wisconsin. We've been seeing like I feel like a lot of people. I get I get emails a lot of time from people in Wisconsin. It, yeah, it definitely. Uh... In fact, I think there's, there's another recent one that I haven't responded to. It reminds me. Emails are, you, you're not necessarily going to get a quick response, unfortunately. It's just uh, just too much. The nature of everything. Uh, you want to do the deflopulator? Yeah. Absolutely. And I think this cover can go on after the fact. I don't know if you'll, um, yeah, you should be able to. Oh, yeah. Oh, Sometimes those can be tricky. Yeah, it's split. It should be split, isn't it? Oh, yeah, right there. Uh, let's see. This is the hardest part? Yeah. Let me know if you need an extra one. Again, if you just happen to be joining us, this is the uh, Flyer yes. L885 link in description. Cargo electric bike. Very simple display up here. I just saw that on the left side. I'm actually going to pop out the battery. Key yeah. on the right. It's a re-engine pack. Yeah, nice integrated into the frame there. Yeah. I feel like that's just becoming more standard now. Interesting. On the side here, it says flight speed lithium ion. I'm not sure what that, if that's a flyer thing, but then it's a re-engine battery pack. Hmm. I think this is probably a 14 or 15 amp hour. Okay. Yeah. 48 volt, 14.7 amp hour battery. So uh, about average, maybe slightly above average. Yeah, nice thing about these, you just set it in and clicks right in. And the keys, of course, don't have to be in it to, yep. to yes. run. Um, yeah, do you want to put the sideboards on? Yeah, let's do it. I'll get you. That's yeah, the charging port there. Also, it's that new uh, three. It's not your standard oh, like, yeah. metal. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, so it goes on here. You think that's right? Yeah. yeah, two in the front oh, yeah. and the back. What right. size? We'll switch spots here. Yeah. Here, I'm walking in the back. Trip over the cord, knock everything down. <laughs> so definitely some uh, like more of a city tread. Um, yeah. These are CST tires. Brand we see on many of the affordable e-bikes that we review. Thanks. All right. I meant to get on the bike. I thought it was called that. Which would you recommend? I seen the video, your bike mechanic built for you. Don't remember the bike. That's too much work. Work. Um, so probably maybe the event and adventure. He also built the up the up. the ride one up seven hundred series. And if you like those videos, definitely let us know. Or if you <laughs> happen to watch the videos, uh, give us a comment or something. We we can. We're open to doing more. Uh, not only assembly videos. Uh, those take quite a bit of time of uh, editing. I mean, the the actual assembly itself isn't bad, but when you're filming an hour plus of uh, Matt dialing everything in. There's just a lot of editing, what to cut out, what to leave in to make it, you know, feel like uh, you're getting the full picture of what you need to do and really the expertise that a bike mechanic uh, really has. Yeah, Matt makes it, I mean, Matt has been a mechanic for, I want to say it's like 15, 20 years or so. Yeah. So he is on the really far end of uh, like perfection. Yes. So he may, he makes everything look like it's out of spec. Um, but that's just because he he always will find something. I mean, that's just the way he is. I mean, it's one of the reasons why you find a good bike mechanic. Yeah. So, I think um, that's a great way to put it. 
Yeah, I mean he's he's a fantastic, he's great at what he does, I and mean, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. But it, he does make it look a little bit harder uh, than I think. Yeah, it may be for most. I think that's fair. Yeah. yeah. If you, I mean, a lot of times, I mean, I'll assemble an electric bike and I'll go and ride it. If anything is seriously wrong, we'll obviously deal with it. But a lot of times the brakes are fine. The shifter might need a slight adjustment. And just over time, I've been able to make the minor adjustments. And usually I don't have any more issues than that. I mean, I, I have had some more issues, but I mean, I review a, a lot of electric bikes and Usually out of the box, I'm fine. Not saying that um, if you're assembling it yourself that you're good to go. I mean, yeah. there's, I do a safety check and things like that. Uh, here's a question for JT. Yeah. Will the wheelbase of a cargo bike fit on a car bike rack? Well, on a car bike rack, no, but uh, on likely a, on yours. Oh, yeah. So we, I have a Saris MHS rack um, that we reviewed. That's going to be on mine. So it's, uh, it's going to go on that rack right after this. <laughs> and uh, I will let you know if it fits uh, for sure, but I believe it will. I mean, there, that's yeah. that's intended for a longer one, but you're like, Ryan has the one up rack. I don't, or yeah, one up rack. Yeah. I don't know if it would fit on the I'm one. I'm not up. sure if it will. We're yeah. going to try the Rad Wagon on there hopefully okay. soon to, um, you know, see if it fits. I think the mm -hmm. only other thing, you know, with like this cargo you bike, it'll be interesting to see with the rear wheel, you'll probably have to strap in that rear tire. Yeah, with uh, the fenders and stuff, it, it, it always makes it very difficult. And speaking of fenders, is there a front fender? There is. It's on that oh, okay. uh, thing behind you. Oh, there there. And uh, let's see here. Pretty sure Electric has the market now. Just saying. I mean, their bikes are very popular. I will say our videos featuring the Electric bikes are very popular. Mm -hmm. There's a reason that we're doing accessory videos pretty much on all of their models. Uh, I do really like the brand. I like the price point because it just allows a lot more people to get on e-bikes. And... I mean, we've been putting a, well, probably you more than, than me, uh, have been putting a lot more miles on the, the electric yeah. XP for sure. Yep. And the on the, premium. yeah, on the X premium and the light. And I mean, they just hold up really well and they're at great price points. So there's, um, there's a lot to like. Yeah. It's just, it's hard to argue with a thousand bucks. I mean, yeah, exactly. On a, a really solid bike um huge part uh hi your videos are so informative thank you that's really the goal of our channel is to help people who are ready to make a purchase or doing research on what e-bike they should buy so try to be uh open and honest and share as much information from you know the perspective if i was personally looking to buy it and we we do try to share uh for the most part bikes that we would personally consider buying uh, I'm not going to say that there's bikes that we review that we're maybe a little bit disappointed with, but we do try to share some of those downsides and let you make the decision, just giving you the information. Uh, favorite reviews, great hill climbing, real world testing. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I think the, yeah, I, I think, I mean, personally, it's really great to compare these bikes side by side. Um, and the hill climb is just, it's a fairly easy thing for us to do, but I feel like if if I was back in the market in 2018, I would have loved to see a video that kind of shows the motor power going up a large hill. Even if I'm not going to put it to the test, it's just good to um, know what it is uh, capable of. Absolutely. Um, cargo bikes seem to carry top 400 pounds. Is that right? Um, yeah, it's 400 I, payload, I believe, yeah, even on four, this one. Yeah, I think that's about right. I think the Rad Wagon's at 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. I I'm curious if the turn bikes, any of them have any higher uh, payload oh. capability. I'd have to look it up. I haven't looked up um, those that much. But usually 400 pounds is probably the highest I've personally seen. Certainly yeah. on e-bikes that uh, we've reviewed. Are there any motors to avoid? I, I, yeah, I think some ahead. of them are privately, like, I mean, some of them I think are buffeting and they're just like privately labeled so i don't know if they all have that i mean buffeting is pretty much the standard everybody runs a lot of companies run buffeting um I, I mean i don't really i mean that's the thing is is we haven't i think out of any of the problems you've ever had with an e-bike a motor has never been won once 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 with the the rad wagon mm -hmm. and um but yeah, they the, covered it i mean they answered you right away and yeah. got you fairly covered straight away so yeah. um but yeah so i mean the motor sent the motor's been around for a long time i mean they're very i mean so i know trek um, specialized all the big companies they started out making um, hubs or uh, hub motors and that's how they made all their e-bikes and that was 10 years ago 
Um, and now they've, of course, switched to mid drives. But so, I mean, the, the hub motors have been around for a very long time um, and they were used before then. So I don't think it's, uh, I don't think you have too much to worry about there. Oh, it goes in the front. front. I know, but you might have to pop out the front wheel to, oh, to, to get, get it on. Uh, you can try if you want to. But, uh, <laughs> Ryan's going to let me break it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the motor's usually not an issue unless you're, like, torturing the motors. And one of the nice things, say, if it is a Bethang motor they're, and you you do have an issue, they're actually not that difficult, provided you're getting the motor you need. They're actually not that hard to replace if you have some uh, mechanical ability because what you're basically doing is you're taking off the rear wheel, disconnecting the power, obviously make sure the battery isn't on, but then it's just a motor case in the, and there's just like T25 uh, screws and you're simply just putting a new motor in. And I did that on the uh, rad wagon. I did a video on it and it, it's not that difficult. In fact, there's people who customize like the rad power bikes. You can check out the rad owners forum and they, you know, there's people that put the more powerful Bethang motors in there and obviously all things at your own risk. Um, so let's see. I was thinking of the upgraded plus for easy getting on the bike. Mind you, I'm fit, but the rack and bike trunk makes it rough sometimes. I'm not sure. Is, talking, up, is, is it the I mean, Rad Runner? Yeah, I'm not sure if you're talking RC. I'm not sure if you're talking about the Rad Runner Plus oh, or the Lect. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the the X Premium. I think is what he's uh, referencing. I think the thing to keep in mind. We tried to talk about it in our your questions answered video. I believe um, just talking about how the mid drive, like just because that's a premium electric bike or advertises premium, doesn't necessarily mean that that motor is going to be best for everyone i think it it is a good experience but it's a different experience than a hub motor um so we, we try to talk about that i bought my electric last march and have 60 miles on it awesome like your informative videos i just purchased my second electric bike went with a 2.0 since i'm six feet six tall six Ooh. foot six foot six inches tall Wow, how do you fit? How uh, does that fit? Yeah, that's a that's a very uh, as a reviewer, that is a very good question uh, for us to have in our pocket. Yeah, and his username is Tall Dude, so uh, I, it checks out. <laughs> I was looking at the Electric XP 2.0 step through. I, uh, is it good? I mean, you can check out our review. I personally think, as far as value price, and now if you check out the long Here's range, the a light, the light up there. Yes. Oh, yeah, the light. Yes. Um, if you check out the video we just did of the long range, I mean, you can kind of decide what kind of range you get, but they're super popular. They're a large and I feel like still growing brand from my experience and what I see on Facebook and things like that. They do have good customer service. It seems like they have parts. Don't quote me on that. Well, we can um, kind of talk insider there. We had the, uh, you said electric, right? Yeah. I mean, we had that, the person that we heard that had an issue with their bike. Um, it was a fairly new XP light and it had, it got damaged. Something happened. I don't exactly understand. Um, and the lecture completely covered it. Oh yeah. Our bike shop. That's right. Our local bike shop. I mean, they completely covered it and I, and I double checked with the mechanic. He was paid. I mean, they completely covered everything for the customer. No yeah. questions asked. Customer dropped it off, picked it up, fixed and was good to go. So yeah, as long as you can, um, I wonder, actually, I think this is supposed to go behind. I do. The fun, the fun. Okay. We'll, we'll have to do that. Um, it clears everything else. So yeah. that's why I was thinking maybe that. So the, uh, we're just looking at the fender here, and I think oh, eventually it'll, yeah. the divot here has to go around the, uh, the, the front fork. You have to take off the flop later and everything. So yeah. We'll leave that for the full, as long as it's done for the full review. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Are hydraulic brakes that much better? You want to answer that one? Ooh, yeah. I mean, there's a reason that cars stop using drum brakes in a lot of places. Um, so they are better. You can get more pull. You're not, they're not as finicky. They don't, um, I mean, hydraulic disc brakes, they just offer more. You're able to put in consistent stopping power all the time. I mean, there's a reason that everybody, I mean, cars switch to them, mountain bikes have switched to them, and there's they are worth it. And really, I mean, the price of them has come down much now. I mean, zoom, stuff like that. If you get a bike has it if you're comfortable or a bike shop can do it for you I mean, you can upgrade them fairly easily um because they they use all the same components as long as you have um, um 
mechanical brakes. And then the other ones we haven't tried out yet, but we've seen a lot is the June, I believe. The June Tech. June Tech. They're, yeah, yeah, hydraulic caliper. Just replace the caliper and it makes it a hydraulic disc brakes. That's an option. We're, we're contemplating getting a set of those just to show it off. Um, but they're, I, I would get hydraulic disc brakes if it's an option for the bike that you like. If that was the only thing out of the bike that I didn't like was, oh, it doesn't have hydraulic brakes, I would still get the bike with mechanical disc brakes. They're perfectly safe. They're better than um, rim brakes per se. Yeah. But uh, I don't think, is there any, there's very few electric bikes that have rim brakes. No, just the the Roadster V2, I think, was the only one. Yeah, I think everything else. And everything fun. else has been, and I mean, that bike doesn't even go that fast. So, and it's lighter weight, so you don't need it. But mm -hmm. these like Tektro Aries uh, mechanical disc brakes, I mean, they're fine. The only thing is, as J2 was saying, you might get some cable stretch. You might need to make some adjustments. You might need to take it to a, a bike shop to get them adjusted a little bit more if you're not doing any of the maintenance compared to hydraulic. Um, but if you're really using your electric bike a ton and you want, you decide you maybe try out some hydraulic and you want them, I mean, as J2 said, you can go to someone and, and take care of them. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, my goodness. Um <laughs> That's awesome. I have a 40 mile per hour e-scooter and I'm trying to sell it to get an e-bike. Wow. That's faster than I would personally yeah. go on an uh, electric scooter, uh, long range or premium electric. Yeah. I mean, we've check out some of our electric videos. If you're curious about the long range versus the premium, uh, if you're new to e-bikes, I would lean maybe a little bit stronger on the long range before you put in that kind of money. Um, that would be my recommendation. Uh, but if you're really committed to riding and you want the elect the X premium and you want the mid drive motor, uh, go for it. Uh, my scooter uses hydraulic brakes, but you have to worry about adding brake oil. It's zoom brand. I mean, potentially you're not having to do it very yeah. often, yeah. Um, but yes, they, they can take, you know, some maintenance as well. I mean, it's no longer a cable. You're going to, uh, like hydraulic system. So you do have to bleed it if there's a problem or whatever. Yeah. They're pretty, they're contained systems. You don't have, shouldn't be too much to worry about, but it is another level of complexity. I mean, absolutely. All right. Do so we, oh, yeah, we'll if you want to glance at the instructions here. So okay. this is the rear, what do they call it? Exactly? Um, the, I, cargo, that, uh, oh, kid man. cargo carrier. This kid looks, and cargo carrier. This looks awesome. It is pretty neat. It, I mean, it pretty much has those front rear, rear hoops, um, like I said, it converts from a essentially a child basket to set your child in, and uh, the cargo carrier with zippers. Um, yeah, this looks it has pads and everything. So, interesting. I think the first one is take these off. So. Yeah. <clears throat> I almost brought a power tool over tonight. I do you regret not doing it. Can you give me the top peak and uh, yeah. case of sockets? Thank you. All right, I'll get everything. Yeah, nice. Fab I mean, I feel like this is probably like the same fabric they use on some of their like pull behind wagons and stuff. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Which, uh, I'm sure they make nice strollers and stuff. All right, and then we have the two seat pads. Oh, these are sweet. Yeah, I was gonna, I was waiting for you to see that. That's okay. So this, I'm almost certain, is made to fit the Thule up maxi windows. It's funny because my brother actually made something very similar. If you check out our like rad wagon yep. video, uh, you know, flyers obviously made their own. Uh, so you just you know drop this in there and tighten it down. A pretty thin seat, but I mean they're kids, so yeah. they can power through it. Yeah. Um, and you get two of those, which is nice. Okay, we're gonna have to bust through some of these. Yeah, do it. Electric has a sale going on. Check it out. Interesting. I didn't realize their sale was still uh, going on. I thought they had like a back to school sale, but I thought I it thought ended. It ended, but I but the Electric runs a lot of stuff. Back to school is yeah. one of the ones they ran one just before that. Um, so they should be running one for Labor Day. Um, and, and, and maybe that's the one he's referring to. Yeah, maybe. I think. You know what? I did get an email. And then I didn't look at like, yeah, maybe that's what this. it is. Yes, yeah, so maybe it just started. So, yeah, definitely check them out. They do run sales all the time. And I'm willing to bet that Labor Day is going to be a sale time for them. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't buy an electric bike if it's not on sale because usually it, or seems, it doesn't come with anything. Yeah, but it doesn't come with anything. Yeah. Usually they'll include some accessories, which is a nice bonus. Mm -hmm. Um, you can check out, I mean, our electric bike, uh, discounts code page, which will be in the description, or you can head to ebikeescape.com and uh click on electric bike discounts and you can or electric bikes on sale i think it's it says at the top and we keep that very up to date i have a trailer for my dogs do i need a bigger fender or is there a guard or something um, um like a pull behind 
Yeah. I don't know exactly what uh, they're referencing. Yeah, I would I would need more information on that. Um, like I'm thinking, are you thinking from the behind if like rocks get kicked up or something? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, yeah, if it's pulling behind, definitely put a fender on. Yeah, or like, rocks. but a lot of those trailers should have like a screen or something to prevent mm -hmm. anything from hitting some sort of mesh. Yeah. It. To be honest, long range looks better value if you want range. I'm still deciding. I yeah, we're, I think we're going back to electric. And yes, I completely agree. Spend the 200 bucks and get the bigger battery for sure. Right now, you can get the bigger battery for free. Um, I'm not sure if that's true, but uh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, we'll have to check on that. Yes, I've never right. heard of this flyer cargo before. Starting to, to research the Rad Wagon and Blick, Blix segment. Yeah, so Flyer, I mean, we, we talked about it earlier in this video if you're just joining us, but this is the same brand that makes uh, Radio Flyer. Radio Flyer, yep. yeah. Uh, I gave you the hard one. Here. Right. Hardware, and then I need the um, the two, the front and rear. These guys? Uh, that and then the bar. Like Some assembly required. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's nice all this comes in like one box. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the instructions are nice. It's, well, it's definitely well, uh, well laid out. Yeah, and I mean, I think, uh, let's see who said, uh, yeah, Chris, so I think personally you're you're on the right uh, track as far as bikes go. I think it just kind of depends what you're looking for. I think there's probably, you can probably find pros and cons about all of these bikes. And obviously we'll have our full review and we've done extensive, um, you know, riding on the Rad Wagon and I can vouch for that being a great bike. Um, that's the one we use most frequently. Um yeah, how many miles do you think you have on your red wagon? Oh gosh, well, it we the one we sold had four thousand yeah. miles, and then we we have been riding a little bit less or doing shorter jaunts, just having two kids and the youngest not being able to fit in the Thule seat mm -hmm. uh, just yet. But it's really interesting because all three of those models had the Thule seat, so like that's exactly the same. Yeah. Um, so I think they're all good options. Uh, diversity love. Okay. My fur baby loves doing rides <laughs> since I added the dog buddy. Awesome. The do a dog buddy? A, do a dog buggy. Dog buggy. buggy. Oh, okay. I've been very happy with our 2019 Rad Rover, 4,000 miles and Rad Runner plus 1,500 miles. No problems to report. Awesome. Tommy, that's great to hear. Another brand we certainly recommend here. You can... We have we do a lot. Of, well, there's a lot of detailed information, uh, not only on our website but also Rad Owners, which is a forum we run. Um, you can check that out if you really want to do a deep dive. How do you get the bigger battery for free? Not sure. Someone else had mentioned that. I'm looking for a car free option for Block Island summers. I don't actually. You know where Block Island is? I do not. Yeah. I try to be a little versed on geography, but that is one that falls short on me. Yeah. Uh, it's for, oh, the, the Labor Day is for accessories, free battery. Yeah, I, d I don't know about this free battery thing. Um, I said, I, I, do, I did see an email. I'll have to, I'll have to see. Yes, it's a pull behind, yeah. So would you need an additional fender? I mean, maybe I would probably, I, I think it would be better to have some kind of mesh mm -hmm. on the actual trailer because I don't know if you'd be able to extend the fender. I guess maybe you could put a plastic piece or something. Yeah, I mean, if it doesn't have a fender, you definitely should use one, but um, if it other than that, you should be fine. Yeah. Um, Is that all of them? I think that's it. Oh. I think we made it through. <laughs> for now. Yeah, thanks guys for all the questions. It's yeah. Always, uh, so I'm glad I I'm glad I came tonight. So I see the hecticness that Ryan has to go through when uh, he has to assemble and read. I think you drew the audience. People are like, oh, it's, it's someone else. Who's it's that? someone yeah. new. Yeah, so do you think you're going to use these seats, right? I uh, assume. Yeah. yeah, I believe they Because this can go on before the... So I think you put like these Or on? does this have to go on at the end? I think it... Because it, um, the cargo... Set, so that these go on at the end. These are the last oh, ones. Oh, yeah, on. yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I mean, it feels for a brand that... I don't know when they first released their first e-bikes, but for a it's brand that... Pretty new. They're yeah. pretty new from what I've seen. I mean, it looks like a pretty nice. Uh, I mean, we found this brand just beca because of commenters too. We just make that clear. Like we, yeah, this is a brand that we had recommended a couple times, and then and once we looked into, it, we were like, oh, this is one we definitely have to look into doing. 
Another thing that I'm noticing here, um, I'm not 100% sure. Were you aware of any potential dual battery option here? Uh, I not. mean, there's, there's four no. welded plates here, but is this for something else maybe? There's this too. Uh, so it may be a dual battery bike of some kind. There was definitely not an option for that currently. Interesting. So Okay, so we will have to uh, do some further digging on that because it looks like this would be an awesome spot for a secondary battery. And oh, look, there's a cable here. Yeah. <laughs> what a coincidence. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, this thing is... Uh, this is a quite a robust um, <laughs> system here. So I don't, I mean, so like uh, Rad Power Bikes calls this the caboose. They're all fairly yeah. similar. This is, yeah, like I said, this is just called, it's the Kid and Cargo Carrier. So. Yeah, Kid and Cargo Carrier. Uh, let's see. Belt drive versus derailleur. Oh, gosh, that's a pretty broad question. I think it probably depends on, uh, I mean, the belt, I don't know. The belt drives are really nice. Of course, it adds a lot of expense to the bike, unless you're looking at some of the single speed options, like uh, the Roadster V2, some of the V-Volt bikes. Um, I mean, if I was, like, if I had to ride, like, a bike all the time and commute on it in the city, in rain, maybe even in snow, like, a belt drive makes a lot of sense because I just, like, uh, JT can attest to my lack of wanting to maintain a chain on my mountain bike. And so I really like the belt drives, but they uh, do cost money. And then, of course, some of them are single speed. Otherwise, you have to get the internally yeah. geared hubs, which add a significant amount. Those parts are actually fairly expensive. Yeah, They're, that's the down, the biggest downfall. If you need a bike with gears because you have hills, you're going to have to go with the chain drive. Yeah. Um, and like, like I said, unless it's Vivo or something like that, and the cost just goes up. Yeah. You can check out our review of the uh, V-Volt Sirius. Yeah. Really and, like those are, I mean, it, and it's actually interesting. So that's a very, speaking of that too, they, uh, it, they're they all internally geared. It's all metal. You really don't have any maintenance to do on that. So that's what Ryan was kind of talking about with maintenance. But the, um, the other nice thing about that too is that they break in over time because they're completely sealed. So they get easier as time goes on, which is pretty cool. So it's a very yeah. interesting system. But yeah, they're not a, nowhere near as popular um, or as affordable as a three. Yeah. Okay, I think it was Block Island is a five by seven mile island off the coast of Rhode Island. Ferry only access, small roads, some killer hills, typical New England coastal, and it's quiet. So now, I'm I'm from New Jersey, so I've uh, I've been I have been to Rhode Island. Um, did not know that that existed, but I know the hills and stuff you're referring to. What was the question about that? Yeah, I was trying to look to see. Yeah, I'm looking for a car free option. Um, Ooh. Anything with gears, you're definitely going to need gears there. But five to seven miles is not a, uh, you're not going to have long, long roads to ride on or anything. I mean, if you're something small, especially if you're going to take it on the ferry, I would probably look at the folding bikes, the electrics. Uh, make sure they can, the, other, the only thing is to be sure of is that you can have a e bike. It's true. On there, that's been an issue um, in some of the islands north of us, and Mackinac Island is one of them. Yes. And, uh, Okay, the website apparently does say second battery is awesome. an option. Cool. Uh, AD2 Racing says, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Again, this is the Flyer L885. Link in the description if you do end up purchasing one of their e-bikes. Supports us and makes our reviews possible. I think you two should decide, design your own bike and sell it on pre-order on a crowdfunding basis. <laughs> I'm curious to see what you would make. <laughs> Gosh, that sounds well, like I can a lot tell of... you after looking at the EBC, we wouldn't let Ryan pick colors. Um... <laughs> um, yeah, we'll we'll take all of um, JT's free time that he would normally edit, and we'll design a bike. No, I think like the idea of that sounds really fun, but I think what you don't see, and I'm speaking with some of these like CEOs of some of these companies, is there's a lot of iterations, and there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Like, what if you do a crowdfunding campaign? The nice thing is if you don't do a crowdfunding campaign, you can do kind of a slow rollout. You send out like yeah. maybe 20 bikes or your order quantity isn't until you get some of the issues dialed in. I mean, yeah. that's what a lot of brands are doing, basically iterating on previous generations of models. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, that would be fun, but there's so many. I mean, I get emails every single week from companies that want to review their bikes. And I mean, there's cool stuff like this flyer bike. I mean, I feel like, I don't know what more I would personally be able to uh, 
uh, add to the to the market. Yeah. I think it would be like more of a fun like I don't know like hey we built a bike and it has like our branding on it. But yeah. I don't know like it, it, yeah I don't know how much it would really. Um, yeah. There's a lot. I mean you have to work with overseas. Yeah. Um, you know Chinese. Um, I personally have never been to China, yeah. so that would be an appeal for me. But um, that would yeah be quite. The- Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, you have to deal with the, the manufacturing process and communication. We're and, not going to talk about the logistics nightmares that are currently going on. Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that would make that quite a challenge. Yeah. I think I've almost got this I think one. It would, all right. Sweet. We don't, I think it would also be really hard to come to like, like, okay, what is the one bike we're going to release? Because it would yeah. have to have everything. And I think yeah. it would be hard to yeah. be a fat, uh, be a uh, fat tire. Yeah, bike. Fat tire bike. Yeah, yeah. just like oh, every other fat tire bike on the market. We'll we'll buy an off the shelf uh, e bike from one of these manufacturers that emails me all the time and just ask them to put our logo on it, and then we'll call it call it a day. No, I'm just kidding. Um, when I go riding, I get looks, and wow, look at that dude pulling this pup in that bike buggy. Awesome. My electric bike has made it more easy to pull, and so much fun. That's awesome. Are there any e-trikes? Yes, Riley. Yeah. Good question. There's uh, a handful. I, I'm not going to say I'm the expert on e-trikes. Uh, Ad Motor is one brand that we had been in touch with about reviewing one of their e-trikes. They wanted us to review their one of their city bikes. And uh, just with all the bikes we were reviewing, we kind of put it on the back burner. But I like the look of their their trikes. And I would I would like to... Um, I would like to uh, review a, a trike for sure, uh, just to feel how it goes. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've no. Have you ever been ridden a trike? I don't think so. I no. Either, I mean, just say and like you could take like even a, a, a non-electric trike and convert. I mean, you could have like two motors and do all oh, yeah. sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, um, I think a lot of times on the trikes, I actually put the motor in the front wheel for simplicity's sake. Yeah, yeah, that would work too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, all right, diversity love. You can make an e-bike and uh, send us a link to it and we'll uh, we'll check it out. Uh, yeah, and it, I mean, there, like I, I was kind of alluding to, there's just so many different uh, brands these days. And uh, I mean, I, I don't want to exaggerate, but it's maybe five or maybe... It's, it's probably less than five, but uh, around there, emails I get per week, want other new companies I've never even heard of wanting us to review their bikes. So what you do see are on the bikes that we do review are like bikes that we've both decided that we think are worthy of being reviewed. Um, and usually we're pretty good at picking out, uh, getting rid of kind of the, the fluff or the sure, companies and turned around again. Sorry, oh, yeah. I'm just going back and forth here. Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure if flyers should be on the front or the rear, and I'm really uh, yes. not. Should get, definitely be on the rear. All right. Last time we're flipping. This one. I mean, this is this is a really nice like quality rear kid car. Go carry. Actually, I didn't install and uh, assemble the one from Rad, but yeah, um, this is pretty. I like pretty the. Nice. I love the versatility of this. This yeah. is something I could for sure see uh, us using as well because you can simply just you know, zip this up mm-hmm. and boom, you don't need any extra, uh, you know, no. basket on here. You just throw everything in and it's a huge space. Yeah. I mean, um, it's a room for two kids. That's, yeah. Uh, that's a nice thing about it. I was trying Love to see that. Okay. Oh, maybe buckles. But yeah. Oh, cause you know what it is? There's those little tracks. You're supposed to put at the bottom that you buckle it down to hold it down. Gotcha. And then when it's up here, you just do this and then the seats go in here. Yeah. So yeah, leave that down so we can show the seats. Um, are they the same? Yes. Oh, and they actually clamp onto the like the side rails. Uh, they go into the. Yeah, but they go in the way. The, yeah, uh, I think my the, brother's his was the other. Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, so this. I mean, as Ryan was saying, this is a really cool um, way that they they use the window, the Thule windows right there. So you, do, yeah. you twist it that way to slide it in, and slide it sideways, and tighten the knob. Just like that. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> I think the only downside I could see to this uh, fabric is if you're riding in the rain, it's just not with yeah, the wheel, yeah. like you'd have to kind of detach everything. So that would be a little bit uh, of a bummer, but 
At least you have fenders. Though. And maybe this is like a waterproof material to dry out. I mean, it's maybe not a huge deal, I guess. But So, yeah, that's locked in there. Yeah. Was there a front? There was nothing else in that box, right? No. I thought the back to school setup had a front basket. I'd have to double check. Oh, okay. But for 2100 bucks, I thought it came with a front, the, the rear one and a front basket. Um, this is good enough for us, so we'll use backpacks. And yeah. I think it'll be good, yeah. And then, you, like Ryan was saying, you have these zippers to zip it closed, and then you throw these over the top, but give it a buckle. And now you've got a, a cargo basket back oh, that's here. That's awesome. So it is pretty, pretty nice, pretty versatile here. Oh, there's a little, even a little pocket on the uh, inside front here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Interesting uh, group of things. I'm curious about, yeah, keeping the kids in and stuff. It'll be yeah, cool to give it a try. So yeah, the only thing we didn't put on yet was these little. There's these lower rails, which go right up here above the steps. Uh, somewhere down here. Yeah, right there. And I just don't know where the front goes. Um, yeah, they go down here. Uh, you can't see it. Just down here on camera. And they uh, for you to put the buckles around. Yeah. So We'll obviously yeah. show that off in the full review and make yeah. sure we uh, share everything. But yeah, I have a guard here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fender's guard. I mean, the fender and a guard on the side. So little, little feet can't go in there. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, I think that's it's a pretty cool bike. What kind of uh, derailleur do we have in the back? Is it um, an Altus? It, it is a a turny. Turny. Okay. So on, on the entry level side. Yeah. So and I mean, it does have Texture Aries brakes. Yep. So Texture Aries uh, turny rear derailleur, the Sys Index. Yeah. Small, simple LCD screen up here on the handlebars. Twist grip throttle. Do we have a rear light? Looks like we have a rear light. I believe so. Should we try turning it on? Sure. Oh, there we go. Turned right on. Let's see. Man, that is a bright screen. I think you're going to be able to see that. In, <laughs> yep. Yeah, it has a front. And then is the rear. Yeah, it's, it's just against the couch. Um, it oh, yeah. The brakes. There you go. You can kind of see it. Yeah, you can see it against the couch there. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Have you said anything about the price? Yes. Uh, 1999 is the... Uh, current price and then obviously it sounds like it's on sale with the extra kids pack with the back to school package um so yes and 2100 is, is that one i like i said i think that one also comes with a front basket as well but um for 2100 so and again and again uh link in the description if you want to learn more yeah. um all right we'll give everyone 30 more seconds otherwise we're going to wrap things up i'll go through the rest of the here uh awesome put some flowers in my cargo basket please uh what kind of locks do you guys like um so it's a tough question because obviously it really depends on where you live and what kind of security rating you personally feel like you need i personally really like sticking with the name brands abis kryptonite i think cd lock makes some decent locks um if you're purchasing aftermarket if you're looking for something in my opinion that offers a good deal of security but doesn't cost a ton I really like the Kryptonite Evo chain lock. Uh, it's heavy, but on a bike like this, you know, throw it in your front rack or in the rear or whatever. Um, that's something that's going to offer you some increased security compared to some of those like cheaper locks. Never use a cable lock, in my opinion, um, unless like you have eyes on it or something. They're called cafe locks for a reason. It's, yeah. If you're just running in somewhere real quick, they're good for that so that somebody can't just push it down the street. But with, I mean, even, even all the other locks with power, uh, grinders nowadays just battery powered ones everything's a little um, yeah you know unfortunately and throw an alarm on your bike uh you yeah it's a we've done a video on that it's a great cheap mm -hmm. like 15 dollar accessory um you can lock it and then obviously maybe not on like a brand that's not super popular but uh you know some of these batteries can be you know easily removed and they're obviously mm -hmm. worth a lot um so you do want to be careful with the battery maybe bring it in with you depending on where you live like riding an 80 pound bike down the street without a battery is not not the simplest thing so, yes or even 60 pounds I mean, that's so yeah take the battery for sure yep yeah. uh one more do they make camera alarms for e-bikes like ring or simply safe but for bikes not that no, i'm aware of not that i'm aware of no. uh and we should also mention air tags a lot of people are using those Apple um, AirTags, yeah. you can hide those i mean if you go on if you like if you're a 3d printer you go like there's mm -hmm. people that'll shove them here they make yep. i think 
Uh, some other like unique mounts in the stem, Up maybe. The stem. I know somewhere on the cap, but I mean the other one is the water bottle cage. Oh yes. Um, they make the one that goes between, sandwiches between the water bottle cage and that. So it's a little harder to see. Um, you could also I don't know about this one in particular, but you, sometimes you can hide them somewhere behind the battery, so they're a little harder to get to. I mean somewhere up in the top in here if you really wanted to. Um, yeah. And again, or, yeah, try. yeah. I would say, unfortunately, the unfortunate thing is that nothing makes your bike theft proof. It right. just makes a theft deterrent. Yeah. The downfall. Yep. Uh, my two bike locks were two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, if you, I did an a, like a huge long interview with Kryptonite, and they recommend spending up to ten percent of your bike value on locks, which I think is a general good idea. We personally live in an area where bike theft isn't an issue, so. Um, yeah you know, we, we still lock up our bikes and use some of the decent locks, um, you know, from kryptonite and Avis and brands like that. Um, but we're not as concerned for instance, a lot, one lock that we do use a lot is the, uh, kryptonite lock that has the combo. So like combo lock is not very secure, but it's also a chain lock, but in our area, it's totally fine. All right. We're going to wrap it up again. This is the flyer L885 cargo electric bike. We'll have a full review on it in the coming weeks. Link in the description if you want to support the channel and other resources down in the description as well. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Thank thanks, you. Riley. Yeah. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. All right. We'll see you soon. Hopefully not with another unboxing. Hopefully with a review. <laughs> soon. Have a good evening. See you guys.